I mean, at this point, we've all been on this hamster wheel called social media for quite some time, and it's left us all with the same burning question. Do I really gotta do this sh I am tired, and I know y'all are too. So I thought it'd be fun if you and I just sat down, created some art, and chit-chat about the things that we care about. Now, I'm a digital artist, so I'll be using my iPad Pro with my Apple Pencil, this is the second generation, and I'll also be using the app Procreate. This is what I'll be working on today. And to make this an even cozier experience, you can download this same line art for free in the description down below. So then we can be working on the same thing at the same time. How fresh. So go ahead and grab you a drink. Don't worry about what's in my cup. Worry about what's in yours. So the burning question is, do I think that we need to have social media to have a successful small business? No. Now, would I recommend having a small business and not being on social media? Absolutely not. It presents us with quite a pickle. These same platforms that can wreak complete and utter havoc on our mental health also have tremendous upside that is impossible to ignore. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about the pros and the cons of what I'm doing to try and shift my mentality around social media while still growing my business. So for those of you who are coming across my channel for the first time, hey. My name is Andrea and I'm the artist behind Coco Michelle Illustrations. I have created audiences on many platforms at this point in my life. So I have a lot of opinions and let's start with that. These are opinions. My opinion! I am not a guru and I do not intend for this to be used as business advice. I'm really just here to talk shit. Jokes aside, I'm very grateful for the opportunities that social media has given me. And it has created a gateway for direct access to my audience. And I can speak to people in all corners of the world and make sure that my product and my services are getting in front of the people who are interested. Because if I were trying to build this business 50 years ago, trust me, the path would be far more difficult. And now that I've given a little taste test of gratitude, let's jump into the cons. I think my biggest issue with social media tends to be that there is no direct relationship between talent, work ethic, and how successful you are on these platforms. And that depends on how you define success. And we'll get a little bit more into that later. But being super talented or working super hard does not guarantee you anything in this game. Not only does that make it really difficult for you to continue to show up to this thankless ass job, but what it also does inadvertently is wraps up our own perception of how talented or how hard we're working. So your self-confidence, value, and worth get tangled up into the algorithm and it's real hard to unscramble them eggs. Here's an analogy that I thought of, which was the best way that I could try and explain what it's like being in social media. Let's say there's this big pool, a community pool that fits like 2 billion people. And you show up to this pool, there are people that are just watching the people in the pool, and then there's people that are actually in the pool. So let's say your talent and your work ethic determine your bathing suit. So the more talented and or hardworking you are, the more beautiful and elaborate your bathing suit is. So you consider yourself to be super talented, you have great work ethic, you show up day in and day out, and you have the most beautiful bathing suit you could ever ask for. So you jump straight into the deep end of the pool. Now, as you're being quickly submerged into this water, you're thinking, this bathing suit is cute and all, but I probably should have learned how to swim. And therein lies the problem. There is no connection to how good you are at what you do and how well you are able to navigate these waters. And I struggle with that. As I mentioned, I'm an artist. I show up, I try and create content that resonates with my audience. I put a lot of heart and energy into my creations and it ultimately just isn't enough. If you don't have some sort of strategy or know-how or understanding of how these platforms work, you will sink regardless of how hard you work. And that's a tough pill to swallow. So you are essentially forced into this content creator role that you didn't necessarily ask for. Now for me, I actually enjoy creating content. So I was able to adjust and to be able to stay afloat in the water. But I've seen plenty, plenty, plenty of super talented people really sink straight to the bottom of the pool. And it's truly not a reflection of how good they are at whatever they do. But it's so difficult to not associate your own identity and worth into the results that you see on these platforms because you put your heart and soul into this stuff. So we have to constantly remind ourselves that our worth is not tied up into the performance on these apps. So some of us are genuinely not gonna be interested in becoming content creators. And we'll talk more on that later. And then some of us will be interested in learning how to build that skill set of becoming an effective content creator. And we will start to see more success. Success is gonna be defined differently by everybody. So let's talk about it. 
What defines success? Now, the New Oxford American Dictionary describes success as the accomplishment of an aim or purpose. So I guess if you post something with the intentions of getting a lot of likes and you do in fact get a lot of likes, is that considered success? Some of you might say yes. So what if I sat you down in front of a slot machine and I gave you 50 bucks? Putting the quarters in, you're playing the slot machine, slot machine, slot machine, and you literally have one quarter left. And you put that last quarter in and you pull the lever and you end up winning $1,000. Wow, that's great. You started with $50 and you ended up with 1,000 bucks. Is that success? Is it considered success if there's not so much a formula to it, but more so luck or chance? Is it success if you can't intentionally replicate or sustain it? Because relying on likes or views is very similar to relying on the results of a slot machine. These apps are set up to keep you in an absolute chokehold just long enough until you tap out and then they'll throw you a couple thousand views every once in a while to keep you coming back. So no, I don't personally want to define my success using metrics that I can't easily identify if they're a result of my direct actions. So that's off my list. So let's look at something a little more tangible, shall we? Like money. I don't know about you, but I see the girlies on a gram and on TikTok and they are Gucci down to the socks. Somebody's paying your bills. Well, I can tell you who it isn't. These apps. As I showed you before, I dabble in a few platforms and here's the money that I make across all the apps. Now, as you can see, if these apps were my main source of income, the only whining and dining I'd be doing is the Applebee's two for 20. And a lot of other creators share this information on their platforms and you'll see it's a lot of the same story across the board. These apps ain't paying. The only one that seems to really want to come up off the coin is YouTube, which has nothing to do with why I'm here today. So if these apps are barely giving us attention and they're not paying us, then what's the point? It's like we're all working so hard towards this digital promised land where we're laid up on the beach while the algorithm feeds us green grapes. But no matter how hard we work, we'll never get an ETA or even guarantee that we will ever arrive. And I know some of you are gonna ask, well, even though the apps don't directly pay you, aren't they great marketing tools that you can use to funnel traffic into your business? And to that I say, no one likes a know-it-all. And yes, you're absolutely correct. Let's get into the pros. Unfortunately, the talking shit portion of this video has ended and now it's time for positive vibes only. Social media is the best funnel of traffic directly to your business that you could ever ask for. I'm sorry to say it, I'm sorry to say it. Even if you are unhappy with your reach or your views or your engagement, think about how much harder it would be to get that same amount out into the real world. You would have to talk to people face to face no thank you and you would be pretty much bound to your geographical vicinity because you again would have to talk to people in their face so even though yes we are putting a lot of time and energy and hard work into the content that we are creating and we're not getting back what we feel we deserve we are still at an advantage compared to if we weren't using it at all Social media not only gives us visibility, but allows us direct access to other business owners so that we can connect, network, and learn from one another to be able to also better run our businesses. We can scale our businesses much quicker. We can get the word out much faster. And even though building a dedicated and loyal audience takes a lot of time and energy, it allows you to have pretty much constant access to this audience once you have them locked in. Because of these amazing benefits, it's hard not to want to label social media as a necessary evil. But, but there are still some exceptions. Now, last Sunday, I convinced my five-year-old that he wanted to get ice cream. Apologies, Sasquatch lives upstairs. So last Sunday, I convinced my five-year-old that he desperately needed an ice cream cone and that he should ask his father for us to go get ice cream. So that's what we did. And when we got there, we realized that there had been a power outage. So I thought, well, maybe I should follow them on Instagram in case they come back up before the evening's over and we can run back out and grab some. So I go to find them on Instagram and their account look more abandoned than a karaoke bar without a liquor license. And yet they have a line wrapped around the corner every single day. They don't need to rely on social media to have a customer because they are an integrated and very well-established part of the community. 
So I started to look up the small businesses in my local community to see what they had going on. And I was like, wait, 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 wait. You guys don't even need social media to be out here making coin? And some of these businesses were established post pandemic. These businesses have integrated themselves into real life community. People are still doing it, so vintage. So I say that to say that I do think that there's a lot of ways for you to have a business and to be a part of a community, like not online. And we also need to redefine what success looks like on social media. If you have 500 followers and they're engaged and they like what you're doing and they like your products, then that is successful because you have found your tribe. That is why we are on social media. We are on there to be social. We are on there to find our people and make sure that they think of us top of mind whenever they need the services that we are here to offer. It's not a numbers game. When you think about everything in terms of numbers, we are so desensitized. Big is not big enough in 2022. Having a thousand followers is a big deal. Having a thousand people sign up to wanna see what you do next is a big deal. Imagine how hard it would be to get a thousand people to show up for a concert or to show up for an art gallery. It would be hard as hell. I don't see a thousand unique people in real life in a month. So to be able to pull and access them from the comfort of my own home with or without pants, come on. So here are the things that I'm doing to protect my mental peace as a business owner in the era of social media. One, I'm redefining what success looks like. I don't give a damn about these views and I surely don't give a damn about these likes. What I care about are comments, shares, and DMs because what those things show me is that this made someone in my audience feel good because they are paying me in the most precious, most valuable resource we have on earth, time. They took the time to comment and I appreciate that and that makes me feel successful. And then DMs, having one-on-one -on -one interaction with people is super important. And if you're building an audience and you're starting to get frustrated, strengthen your DM game. I Listen, I'm scared of DMs 99% of the time. It's a Forex bot trying to get me for my coin. But when there's real people in there, I love having true, honest conversation. It's a game changer. Now, I'm no fool, okay? I too live in the real world where real money is the only accepted tender that I've seen. So we have to get you paid. So I'm gonna recommend to you this video where I walk you through exactly how I use social media to create a multiple six-figure business because let's be honest, our landlord don't give a damn about our DM. So I hope you enjoyed our little chit chat session. This is really fun for me because I have lots of thoughts and feelings and I want to be able to create a space where I can share them with you all. And the conversation don't stop here, baby. I'll meet you down in these comments. Also, here is how my piece turned out. If you colored along with me, definitely go ahead and share that on Instagram using hashtag drawing with Coco. I will share some of my favorites in the next video. Thank you guys and I'll see you in the next one. Deuces.